Hello and welcome to the South Lanarkshire Refugee Digital Climate Change Workshop, where we'll talk about climate change and everything we can do to reduce the effects of climate change and also what we can do to make the world a better place, because together for our world. And today we're going to continue our talks on climate change. And I have with me a very special person, a very special guest who would be taking us on a presentation on uh, some of the processes that we can do with regards recycling our old clothes or, you know, recycling some of the things we have. And she's an artist. She's coming from the creative uh background so she would be using some creative measures to help us with recycling and let me bring my guest on hello Temi. hi hello it's great to How be here you? i'm okay yeah. Yeah, good, 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 good. Okay, so before we continue, I think um, I've seen some few comments and I know definitely these are people trying to welcome you and saying hello as well. So uh, I'll start with our wonderful artist here in Scotland, Anna Model. Hello, hello, Anna. How are you? How are you doing? Thanks for joining us today. Um, I think Baja, Baja, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Baja. It's so lovely that you guys are always, you know, here and, you know, to encourage us to to show that you are actually um, part of this workshop and, you know, you're gaining from what we've been learning so far. Patience, hello, good evening, everyone. Good evening and good evening from Jude as well. Jude, good evening. So basically, I just want us to quickly... If you're watching, please, and you've been part of these workshops, please let us know what you've um, what you've gained, what you've learned so far. You know, just as a recap, what if you have any points that you've learned or things that you've been using, some of the tips that the facilitators have, you know, explained to us in the past and that you've been using in your own homes, in your workplace, things that you've been doing. Because for me, I've been more conscious of my electricity. I've been more conscious of my usage of energy even when i'm using it as soon as i finish using it i switch it off or at least make sure i do the best practice that is one thing that definitely i've been doing more of yeah tell me as an artist um i know people sometimes think okay art and uh, climate change what what have they got together what what have they what's the relation and all that what are you presenting to us today what would you be talking about Okay, so I'll be talking about um, batik today and um, how you could use your old clothes, how you could recreate them into something useful and um, which in, in a way also help in reducing um, wastage, which has to do with climate change. One of the reasons why we're doing this climate change is how to reduce wastage and how to reuse things in a way so that we can help save our um country save the the society and all save so we're we'll talking about batik here yeah, save the planet here yeah. okay 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 um i don't know okay yes mora she's dropping the comment saying what she has learned actually learned that we can manage ways by making it useful to ourselves yes and i think that is what uh temi is going to be presenting to us today something that you could have thrown away or because you don't like it anymore you know, you can just find creative ways to make it become something different and you, at least you have another kind of likeness or attachment to it and you'll be able to use it again for another few months, yeah. if not years, making it useful to ourselves. And then we can actually reduce our energy level, which can help us and our environment. Definitely, definitely. Good evening, Monica. So we're still taking good evenings. And what if you're just joining us, what we want to know is what you've learned so far, what you've what tips have you taken on board that you've been using in your own homes, in your own places of work? You know, generally just things that you've been doing. Because I know that somebody sent a testimony saying, oh, he now takes the train more than drive. And that it was because of this workshop that he attended and he's now, you know, doing more of driving than, I mean, doing more of catching the train more than driving. So please, guys, wherever you're watching from also don't forget to share this video and um you know 
please share it and tag us on your social media so that more people will get to see it. So tell me, what's the advantage of um, Batik? Um, and what, what is Batik uh, in general? What is Batik? Okay, so um, basically Batik is the use of um, melted wax to create a design on fabric. So it's, it's called a resist pattern. You just use your wax and um, you create design, whatever kind of design you want on your fabric with wax or paraffin wax, whichever one you call it. So that's what batik is. And um, one of the advantage of batik is the fact that apart from saving you money, you could reuse it, which is really good. And you could create so many things with it. Your old clothes, you could create throw pillows from it. You could create cotton from it. So you don't have to waste it. You don't have to throw it away. It's very useful. So that's the major um, use for it. And in terms, help us to save our planet and all that that has to do with climate change. Okay, okay, okay. So it's it's majorly to reuse and to repurpose things. Okay, that's mm -hmm. great. Um, I can see some greetings coming in as well. Hamid, good evening. How are you doing? Um, okay, without wasting too much time, please, guys, don't forget, just, you know, try and share this video so, uh, you know, more people in your contact can get to see. So it's not only us that is benefiting from it because we want it to be the larger the benefits, the better for everybody. So good evening. I'm just going to put up the presentation or if anybody also has anything that they they can remind us because this is a recap uh this this is a recap of what we've been doing so far if you can remind us any tips that you've learned or that you have been applying to yourself in your homes in your place of work place of worship anywhere that you've been applying to yourself please quickly drop it within the next 10 20 seconds before we go straight to the presentation so tell me how can artists be more environmentally friendly with what they do? Um, basically, it just um, being creative. Always think of ways in which you could create things from your environment. Back in the days, you could actually pick things from the road, from the street, and create something with it. So at the end of the day, nothing is wasted. Wasted. You could reuse so many things. So as an artist, we're always looking for ways to create things, to make to make things useful. No matter what you think, there are some things you might just feel like, okay, this thing has no purpose. But you'd be surprised that an artist will, will see it and they will find a purpose for it. That's where most of all these, our abstract designs comes from. Something that you might feel like is not useful. Somebody will make something from it and you'll be surprised what you could make with it. So yeah, that's uh... Yes, because I, <clears throat> I remember you showed me a plastic that could be remade into what was that again was it not um, like a steam, yeah like a yeah yeah so there's like so many thing. things but yeah, yeah we'll, we'll just go ahead go straight to this um to this presentation and if anybody has any comments or anything they want to drop they could please drop it and once the presentation is finished i would i will bring those um, comments up so yes i'm excited to this Okay, I think um, a comment just dropped in. Let me see. Yes, it's from Amid Adil. I really appreciate these workshops a lot. We have learned more about how we can manage our waste and how it's more important to us. Yes, the benefits to us. Thank you very much, Amid. Thank you. Okay, Grace is just joining us. Good evening. Evening to you. Good evening, Grace. Hope you're okay. And thank you so much, guys, for at least sunday evening for giving us your time this sunday evening to be with us so we really appreciate it not taking that for granted yes okay as i said i would bring up the comments once the presentation is done let's go straight to the presentation you excited tell me <laughs> yeah I can't wait to <laughs> <laughs> all right all right okay step up from the um tie and dye we washed the other time so i'm going to show you how you can use um wax you can use candle wax or paraffin wax so i have paraffin wax here on how you can design it on your already tied fabric to create a better design there are lots of design you can create you can do flower design 
you can do animal design you can do basic shape and whatever kind of design you can even write your name on your fabric so just something to make it you know beautiful attractive like me i like things extra so i don't know if you're one of those that like extras so um we're going to start by melting our wax this is the um paraffin wax we're going to heat it on the fire melt it and use it to create the design so just stay with me and i'll show you how we're going to go about it you can do your design on a plain fabric but i just like to use already dyed fabric because it makes it colorful like i said earlier i like extra i like colors i like beautiful and bright things so you can do it on plain fabric and you can also do it on tie and dye the one that is already dyed fabric just to make your design come out better but you can actually do it on any as long as it is cotton material you can use it for it so i'll put this on the fire to melt it for the process so you just pour it inside and allow it to melt so the thing is you can't use um, you have to let it heat up it can't be too hot and it can't be too cold because if it's cold the the, the wax will not penetrate so the, your design won't come out then if it's too hot it's going to burn your fabric so you have to make sure that when you do it you you watch it by the time you put it on your fabric it will show I will show you all the things you need to see by the time you put it on your fabrics it's supposed to be transparent and it will show at the other side and we're going to use our um, foam to take the the wax and put it on this so i'm going to show you how it is done so you can use any it's, it's actually foam any kind of foam so this is the one i got so i'm just going to cut out the a shape of a pen or something just something that you know you could like you want to write or create a design or something so yeah So you can use things around your house. You don't have to, you know, rob the bank for anything expensive. Everything you need is around you. So this is it. So this is it. This is what I'm going to be using to apply the wax on the fabric. Um, let's see if the thing has melted enough. It hasn't. Let's try it out. So, um, like I said, you can create any design of your choice. You can write your name. You can do flower design. You can do, you know, um, animal, whatever you want to do on it. So, but we just want, I just want to make it simple. So, I might just end up, I would just end up doing something that has to do with dots. So, this is how you know your wax is working well. By the time you look behind it, you will see that it's transparent, which means it has gone through. Okay, so before we continue, I'll have to tell you the purpose of this board. You could use board, but I couldn't get a board, so I had to use um, a carton, a hard carton. So, it's basically a hard surface anyway, just to put it in between the fabric. You can see it's both sides. So, if I don't, I don't want the design here, to show here but if you want your design the same design at the top to show behind it it's fine you could leave it so it can penetrate through but because i don't want that i just want the design to be at the front part not at the back so that's why you put this to differentiate and to demarcate it in order for you to be able to create your design so that's the purpose of that so we just um so i'm just going to keep doing the dots it just depends on you whatever you want to do actually you just keep have to you have to keep checking you can see it's showing at the back which means it's working the way we want it so you don't forget that it has to be on low heat it doesn't have to be too hot or too cold because if it's too cold your design won't come out it will break and please don't forget there's no mistake in art there's no mistake in art nothing is stupid nothing is you know out of it whatever you do it's your design it's whatever you say it is that's what it is okay like now you see this one was boiling like the other ones i don't know if you noticed it but that's because the oil is getting too hot which is not good for the fabric it's going to um affect the fabric and probably spoil the quality if i continue doing that so i need to just take it out and let it cool down for a while then i continue using it you can just do whatever you want it's your choice it's your design it's your work My name is Tammy, and I'm going to put it here for everyone to see.
so you don't need to throw that dress away you could you know recreate it to something else and keep your money Yeah, that's it. That's me. So these are ways you can, you know, we use that dress. We use mm -hmm. that trouser, that skirt, whatever it is. Create it something else. Create something else with it, you know. So I just need to adjust more so I can do the hand parts. And you use this is a, the dye we used to the colors different colors we have different colors of dye so this is the dye we're going to use on the fabric in, it, in order to bring out the design then we have our wool which you use to tie the design the pattern you want to do or to create so i'm going to um do one of the patterns i just want to tie you can decide not to tie like i said but i just want to tie just for the design to come out so this is like an handkerchief so i'm just going to knot some parts of the work just to bring out the design so this is how i decide to do mine there are different design patterns you can you can tie but i choose this so the essence of actually tying is just to prevent the dye from absorbing some part of the fabric you still want to see some of these colors like the lines showing in some part of the fabric so that's the essence of your time is your choice you can decide not to tie it because this has already blocked some part anyway so but i just still want to tie for more design to come out So, um, not too tight so you don't have to struggle while losing it, but, but tight enough so the dye doesn't pass through the fabric. Okay, so you just um, wet it a bit so that your, your dye can go in quickly and faster. Not too much water, anyway. Okay, so um, truthfully, I'm not sure what color is this because they are all mixed up. So, um, but I know they are all dark colors, brown, blue, black. Yeah. So, because most times it's always good to use a darker color as your final color just to bring out the, the, the colors properly because I already have light colors here. So the only colors that can bring out this color is to apply a darker one on it. So I'm just going to apply the colors just to go in. This is going to be a surprise because I'm not sure what color is this, but let's see how it goes. Okay, so we're still applying the dye, you know, you need to put it everywhere. Sorry, it looks a bit messy, but you can see all this part are the wax. So you can see it, those are the wax coming out like that. Normally, we're supposed to leave it to oxidize for about um, 20 25 minutes to allow the dye to penetrate properly into the fabric before the waxing before we do the de-waxing. So this is the work. You can see how it looks. So just allow it, we're supposed to leave it for like 20, 25 minutes. So all this are the wax that we put on the fabric. You can see them. So that's the wax we put on the fabric. So we're going to leave it for mm, 20, 25 minutes to oxidize before you do your de-waxing. So this is us done. It's time to loosen it and see how the design came out. So I'm loosening it. So we can all see what we've created so far. 
the design we've made. So this is our work all done. That's it. That's it. So the next thing is to de-wax. I was going to use hot water to de-wax and then um, that just to remove the wax from the fabric and the excess dye on the fabric just to rinse it away from the fabric. So we're going to use hot water. So we're just going to pour the hot water on the fabric just to take all the wax away. So don't forget, don't put too much hot water because you want some of the wax to still be on the fabric so you can, um, while you iron it, it will make it shine. So you don't take all the wax away. So this is it, so we just rinse with cold water. Just remove the excess dye. Ta-da! This is our finished work. You can see all the design. My name is out and the colors and the background is out. So this is our finished work. You can do yours in different colors, in different design, with different patterns. Whatever you choose to do and create is your choice. And don't forget, there is no mistake in art and art is life. Thank you. Yes, that was brilliant presentation. Thank you for that. <clears throat> and guys, if you're watching, if you have any question to ask Tammy on how she did it or what other ways you've done your own batik or which other ways you you repurpose your clothes, please let us know by commenting down. And, you know, we really appreciate that. But I think some comments also came in when I was talking about... Um, what have you benefited from these workshops so far i would flash it up again i'm not sure if i did with this particular one but i'll start from here so this is more i actually learned that we can manage waste by making it useful to ourselves yes and then we can actually reduce our energy level which can help us and our environment definitely hamid also said i really appreciate this workshop a lot we have learned more about how we can manage our waste and how it's much important to us. Yes, thank you. Jude, guys, don't forget, if you have any comments to ask Tammy, please just drop it in the comment section if you have any questions to ask her. I really appreciate the program. I've turned my old beshi into a new apron. Wow, 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 that's, that's good, that's powerful. Into a new apron due to the stitches, and though the stitches are not all clean, and the cutting was big challenge, but I made it, yes. That's the most important thing, at least making it, attempting it, and also saving that cloth and preserving it from going into the waste, into the landslide. That is the most, uh, landfill. That's the most important part, at least reusing it for a while. Thank you very much. And as um, Grace was saying yesterday, there's lots of things we can actually repurpose clothes to. It's not only maybe apron, there's lots of other things. And um, hopefully in the next seasons of this workshops i will also try and get i would we'll do we'll focus more on the creative side of things because we are creative people and we believe it's good to show people how to do those kind of things we'll, we'll focus more on recreating repurposing and reusing the old um your old stuffs even sometimes you buy new stuff and you just don't like it anymore it doesn't even necessarily have to be old you know just recreating stuffs and um yes Festus Latin Day, Pastor Festus Latin Day, thank you so much for joining us today. Quite enlightening and informative. Good job. Thank you, sir. We appreciate that. We appreciate your time. We appreciate that Sunday evening you've you still took out time out of your busy schedule to be with us. 
Angel, yeah, we've missed you. I'm not sure if you are in the last workshop, but Angel would or you were watching, you didn't comment. How are you? Good evening. Oh, DJ, I'm definitely going to give this a try. Yes, I think you should. Tell me what you feel. I think yes, you, you're should. inspiring. So. She should go ahead. <laughs> okay, I think you've got a question for Timmy. Does dye work better on bright or light fabric? Um, it works better on bright fabrics. It depends on um, what you are doing, what you're creating. But normally, of course, your fabric most times comes out plain. So if you want to create something colorful, then you have to dye it with a light fabric, for, with a light color first, then probably a darker color. So that's it. OK, cool. And I think you explained it actually because it was already light colored. You had to use dark colors to kind so of bring, out the it design. Or bring it out a bit more. Yes. Yeah, so the next person, wow, creativity at work. This is very beautiful. Yes. Creativity, sense, and, you know, just being spontaneous, knowing what to do. Like it, that is the whole essence of this workshop is just about enlightening us. And I'm sure. By the time many of us start to think, okay, what can I do with this thing? Even if it's not batik, but because you've seen how some things have been repurposed, you can always redo them or find your own way to do it. And wow, so beautiful. Thank you. And I think another question is coming from Raphael. Did I bring that up? I have a question, please. Sorry, I joined a bit late because of I was in transit. No problems. Thank you for still taking time to be part of the workshop. My question is, the dye, is it natural or artificial? Good question. Okay, so um, back home we have natural dyes, but most of the dye we have here are artificial dye. You can't compare it to the kind of fab the dyes we have back home because I know of um, the blue, especially the blue dye, we have a tree back home where you can make that from. So most of the dye back home are more natural than the ones we have here. Because the ones here are kind of uh, made and uh, for sale. Where so so talking of back home and then um, this natural dye you just mentioned that because you said when you said natural dye I wasn't even thinking that much. But when you explained by saying the tree, can you break that down to everybody's knowledge? You know, because it seems. Angel knows about natural and non-natural. For me, I didn't know that dye, I would just assume dye is dye. I wouldn't have thought there was, but you saying tree. So that means, explain that, please. Okay, so we have dyes that are gotten from leaves, from tree back home. But the ones here, I, I don't, I'm not very sure how they process the ones here, but I know they are not as, they are not natural like the ones we do back home. That's why most times if you, if, if you see the, the, the work we make back home, they are richer, the colors are richer and they could stay for long than they could stay for years. In fact, at work back home, the more you wash it, the brighter it becomes, the more beautiful it becomes. Unlike the dyes we have here that they, they can get faded easily. But those ones from back home, because they are natural, because they are gotten from leaves and um, tree, they process them. They have a way they make them. I know of, um, especially places like when you go to places like Oshobo, they are very good at, you know, processing processing um, natural dyes back there. So that's how it works, yeah. Okay, so this natural dye, and um, you said from leaves, were they already done? Or you just go to the tree, like, you know, as if no. we're plucking, you're taking fruit. You, you no, they have a way, no, they have a way they, they process it into that. Okay, they've already done them. And then you, you buy that one. You mm -hmm. buy those dice. Okay, so they are bought in the market. Yes. Okay, whereas these ones you used, I said the ones you used here, I know they've been bottled. They've been, mm -hmm. so these ones were just bought online, like in yes. shops or this, online. Yeah, yeah, like, sorry. Go ahead, sorry. Yeah, go on, go on, go on, go on. Okay, so like the 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 one in back home, you get to do your mixing yourself with the caustic soda and hydrosulfite. But the one we got here, it was already mixed everything. All you needed to do was just add water in it. So it's already mixed, like, you know. But back home, the, your, you have to mix it depending on how many yards of fabric you're using to determine how many caustic soda you're putting, how many hydrosulfite you're using, how many amounts of dye you're going to mix in it. 
so yeah that's how it works yeah okay that's that's brilliant i think um um uh, angel has just giving somebody that might be watching this a business idea <laughs> so we need somebody that can bring these natural dyes yeah, and get yeah. to, to artists and creative people in the western world so I think, really. I think that, yeah i think that's a business <laughs> idea for somebody out there that has the time the energy and the money to do that and please let us know once you get it done that, that you heard from this workshop that would be good that would be would would appreciate that okay yeah that's the natural dye or no natural dye okay i mean that you i think people are just saying wow wonderful thank you so much everybody that has joined so far please don't forget share the video like even though some some people are saying oh they came late because obviously we know this is sunday evening you it's time to catch up with families or just relax watch your favorite programs but you've put in the time to be part of us so we really appreciate the time you've given us patient says wow jude says wow i love this at least i can wear my newly apron and try this again yes you can you can design your apron and give it as many uh, lives as you want and please post pictures let's see them good evening yes good evening okay uh isa tofumi saying sorry she just joined i came late that's fine though we're rounding up but then the videos are still going to be online they're going to be live there so you can always watch it again and don't forget, you have one second to quickly ask Tammy any more questions. Okay, I think this is kind of like a question, confusion. Okay, now I get it because I kind of get confused why it's not done in boiled water. Sorry? I didn't get that. Did you did you pick that, Tammy? Uh, Bada, please, can you retype? Can you retype your is it? Okay, I'm thinking why she was watching, she was confused, but then she now realized you did it in boiled water or something. Badger, please, can you make it more understandable for us? Because I don't know, is this a question, a comment, an observation? I, I think she's talking about the, um, the maybe the, why we were de-waxing with hot water. I don't know if that's what she's talking about. That why did you do it with hot water? It, doing it with hot water is to the wax it. but maybe i think because we're talking about artificial dye and original dye, um, natural dye because back home you could actually put it inside the boiling water because you are not afraid of the old dye washing out and all that because the dye is stronger it will last longer i don't know if that's what she's talking about but this one we had to pour the water because of the kind of dye i don't know if that's what she's talking about Oh, okay, 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 okay. Because, you, yeah, I think you were even saying something like, don't put too much mm -hmm. hot water so that you don't yeah, lose all that. Okay, because oh, the, on the, family, the, the yeah. natural way or the organic way would have been you dip it into the hot yeah. water, so yeah. at least it will come off. Yes. Okay, but you didn't do that now because you don't want the whole no, dye I to wash off with the hot water. I know it's not as strong as the ones we have back home. Okay, 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 okay. Okay, so pros, Fina, if that's what you were saying, then that should be it. So this dye can be used for business. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. In fact, we actually need more most of those there because there are lots of crates that you could do you could do your cuttings from it, you could do bed sheets from it, you could make throw pillows, you could design a bag, a shoe from this batik we're talking about. And but you know, because the kind of dye we have here is not encouraging us to really make most of these things because we know it's not going to last as much as when we have the dyes we have back home. With the dye you have back home we could use those for years and it helps us to preserve our culture also so please if anybody's into the business thing please bring us that we're ready to buy <laughs> <laughs> we're ready to patronize yes <laughs> okay so wow this is wonderful i think i'll try this on my own yes and somebody angel is rafael is confirming that yeah the natural dye back home is done in boiled water okay so that was what he was saying mm -hmm. that okay, okay 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 yes i think it's due to the dye and all of that that was why yes it was good you guys are at least letting us know how you do it how other people do it in different places in different parts and yes so tell me any more thing to share anything um 
basically just the fact that someone should please bring us die. <laughs> we, want to, we want to preserve our culture. We want to, you know, we want to save our planet. We want to re reuse our old clothes to create things and beautiful things. So anyone that can help, please, we are in need of that. <laughs> okay, man. Okay. Um, Zigbe, thank you so much. Good information. Thank you. I think we should be saying thank you to Tammy for, you know, the information so far. And this information put out there, it's for us to keep um, using and to keep applying them to our daily, daily activities. We just need to be very intentional. We need to reuse, recycle, and also reduce. I think reducing is a big deal if we if you try and be very very uh you know put effort into reducing like say no to some things or reduce what you would have you know done and i, and I know when we we're just chatting there Tammy, you were saying you said something about the electric when we did the energy efficiency workshop what you, you told me something but i want you to say say it out here so. <laughs> About, I said it felt, felt like the guy was talking about me because I always cook in bulk. I don't, you know, think about my electricity. But since that day, I have been so conscious about it. You know, I try to reduce anything I'm not using, turn them off, and you know, so it's re it has really been formative and you know, inspiring. Yeah. Yeah, it has really been even because for me as well. You know, I'm now so much conscious about it. Um, on. On Friday, we went for we went for a workshop on COVID nineteen and how it affects um, and the effects of COVID nineteen on people of that from diaspora here. And you know, from the toilet, the corridors, I was just switching off lights. <laughs> 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 I hope we will end up having OCD with switch. I'll just switch from like so. Yeah, um, I think Raphael is also Raphael. Are you? You know, it seems he's into this. In fact, the dye is actually burned together with water to allow it to come out very well. Saying this from experience, thank you for sharing your experience. I've actually worked on natural dye. Mine was obtained from a tree back. Let us know what tree it is. Give us some expos. Let us know what tree we will start looking for, <laughs> or we we'll start planting more of those trees. Because um, also Mr. Sayang that um, worked us on um, that took us on the workshop of um, energy efficiency. He also uh, encouraged us to plant more, and that we should um, you know have more natural stuffs at home, have plants and all of that. Even in pots, if you're saying you don't have land in your house to plant, you can always use pots you know and since then i've gotten uh, a palm tree in the living room and i'm going to get another one as well just you know so these are some of the things that i've started taking on board myself and i wish more and more people do that there's a lot of hellos coming in and i believe people are just joining okay this is for you I'm proud of you, sister yes thank you for coming out thank to support you. her wow so amazing Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Interesting. Interesting. Can prepared meter reduce energy? I think prepared meter would do a good job because it would you because as long as you are able to, it will help you to manage what your what your energy bill is. You'll be able to see what you're consuming, and that way, because your money is great, you're seeing the money, you're seeing you know it through the meter. You kind of reduce what you're using you reduce your energy usage peter petro's interesting god's love thank you everyone thank you for joining us thank you really appreciate okay then this this question can you dye jeans material yes you mm. can you can you can dye basically anything actually yes you can Jean, you can dye jean from blue to black, yeah. But there's one, there's something we call um, flakes. It helps you. It helps the 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 dye to stay longer on the jean. Like it it helps it um, to to last longer, so it doesn't fade when you're dyeing jean. So most times when you're dyeing jean, you use flakes to 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 do the dyeing. Flakes, flakes. Is yeah, that still is that still um, wax? 
no, it looks like cornflakes. So they call it flakes. It's yellow. It's like the way cornflakes looks like. Yeah. So that's how it looks so, like. So what would that be called? Because I'm sure if you Google flakes, I think cornflakes will be the first thing to come dye up. Flakes. If, if, it's dye flakes. Dye flakes. Okay, dye yeah. flakes. So, so the person that is that was Iretiolu, Iretiolu. So yes, I think Temi saying you need to add some flakes to it, but that you can dye your jeans as well. And um, I think yeah, dyeing jeans would be something good because there's different colors of jeans. There's light blue. There's you can always make if it more colorful. Blue. Yeah, if you want it darker, maybe the blue is faded, you could dye the same blue. If you want to change it from blue to black, fine. If maybe the the black is fading, you want to redye it, fine, you can redye it. But most times it's advisable to dye it with flakes so it stays, you know, longer. Yeah. It, it lasts longer, okay. It lasts longer, yeah. It was from a cashew tree. Okay, yes, because cashew always stains clothes. Mm -hmm. Cashew water can stain, so it's from the tree. Oh, wow. So cashew is that important. Okay. No wonder cashew is always a, it's a cash crop, isn't it? Yes. So oh okay, cashew. So we'll plant more cashews and get more benefits from it. Peter Petros, this is interesting. More and more new ways to make us admire and get used get use our old clothes again. Get to use our old clothes again. Yes, thank you, Peter Petros. Definitely. Definitely interesting thanks so much <laughs> okay um we've, we've come to like the end of it uh we just want to if there's you know we just want to encourage everybody to try as much as possible to make an effort reduce what you're using be be you know make attempts to save the planet reduce your energy usage don't waste if you don't need you know if you don't need to and try and find a new life for whatever it is that you've you've used and you think is still is still a big you know it's still possible for it to be useful or pass it on to somebody else that might need it rather than so train away should be like our last resort mm -hmm. So we thank everybody for coming. Thank you, Tammy, for the time that you've put into this. Thank you so much. And the biggest thanks goes to our sponsors, people that have made this possible for us to, people that have made it possible for us to be able to, to bring this program, this workshops to us. We really thank them. Big thanks to the community fund for funding these workshops and for making it possible for us to talk about awareness of climate change and until next time until the next season of climate change workshops i'm saying big thank you to all of you big thank you to Tammy. big thank you to everybody that's been watching and please when you're doing these things in your homes let us know the effects you've gotten let us know the benefits you've gotten from it keep in touch let's keep in touch uh, i'm on social media so please do tag me or me message me or comment under these videos and until next time, we're just saying thank you and bye-bye. Bye, Timmy. Bye. Thank you.